Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at quadratic inequalities. In particular, I want to look at the question, find the solution of x squared plus 3x minus 4 is less than 0. Now before we begin, I want to take a look at what I would call the high school method for solving this problem. In an ultimate video, I will show how to solve this with the intermediate value theorem, but that would be a pre-calculus or calculus topic. So for now, we're going to need to be able to factor. In particular, we need to be able to factor this quadratic expression into two binomials. We also need some knowledge of multiplying integers. For instance, we need to know that the product of two negative numbers is a positive number, and that the product of a positive and a negative number is negative. Also, we need to be able to write an inequality, whether it be a basic or a compound inequality. So let's go ahead and get started. We have, we're looking at the inequality x squared plus 3x minus 4 is less than 0. And now what we need to do is we need to factor this into two binomials. So we need to ask ourselves what two numbers will sum to a positive 3 and multiply to a negative 4. Well, I think we can handle this. This would be x plus 4 times x minus 1 is less than 0. And now what this tells us, we could quickly check. We have 4 minus 1 is a positive 3. 4 times a minus 1 is a negative 4. So now we, we look at this and we have the product of two numbers is less than 0. Well, if we're multiplying two numbers and they're less than zero, that means the product of these two numbers is negative. So that means that either one of them has to be positive. Well, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative. So this brings us to two cases. But in the first case, let's consider the case where x plus 4 is greater than zero. Well, when this is true, then we have that x minus 1 has to be less than zero. So x plus 4 is greater than zero and x minus 1 is less than 0 in this case. This and statement here is really important because they both need to be true in order to satisfy this inequality for case 1. So now we solve each individual inequality and we arrive at, by subtracting 4 from both sides, we have that x is greater than negative 4. And now when we solve this one, we have to add 1 to both sides. We have that x is less than a positive 1. So now we need to graph this. Let's see what this looks like. We have x is greater than negative 4. Now keep in mind when it's strictly greater than, we're going to go ahead and do an open circle this way. And now I'll use a different color for this, but we're going to be shading in everything greater than negative 4. So everything to the right of negative 4. But now what does the second statement say? So we have x is greater than negative 4 and x is less than 1. So we go ahead and we find 1, we put an open circle, and once again it's everything to the left of x is less than 1, so everything to the left of 1. And notice how these solution sets in some sense collide. And when they collide like this, this is what's building our compound inequality. So right away looking at this case 1, we have that our solution set is all values x such that we have... Now let's look at an alternate way of writing x is greater than negative 4. It's important to be able to be flexible in math and write things alternate ways. This is uh, exactly the same as saying negative 4 is less, is less than x. So we have x is greater than negative 4, but this is also saying the same thing as negative 4 is less than x. Now the reason why I want to look at it this way is because when we write negative 4 is less than x, now we can build that compound inequality because we have x is less than 1. So we don't need to write x a second time. We can just say x is less than 1. Like this. So now this would be the solution for case 1. Now this in turn is going to be the full solution to this problem. But let's go ahead and look at why case 2 would arrive at a contradiction. So let's go ahead and look at case 2. So now in this example here, Remember, in the first case, we had that x plus 4 was greater than 0 and x minus 1 was less than 0. So now we're going to alternate. We're going to be looking at x plus 4 is less than 0 and x minus 1 is greater than 0. But now how do we solve these inequalities? Well, we subtract 4 from both sides on this case. And we have that x is less than negative 4. Keep in mind, they both need to be true in order for them to multiply to a negative number. So now we have x minus 1. Oh, I'm sorry, we can just go ahead and solve this. We have add 1 to both sides, and this tells us that 
x is greater than 1. But now look at what happens when we try to graph this. Remember, we need both of these to be true. We need x to be less than negative 4 and we need x to be greater than 1. But can that happen simultaneously? Well, we look at negative 4. x is less than negative 4, which tells us all the values less than negative 4. But now what happens when we look at x is greater than 1? These are all the values to the right of positive 1. x is greater than positive 1. We look at all the values to the right of positive 1. But there is no common value of x that satisfies both of these inequalities simultaneously. For instance, let's look at, let's say, the point x equals 2. When we evaluate this for x equals 2, well, for 1, when we plug x equals 2 into this inequality, we could check it two ways. We're looking at x plus 4, x minus 1 is less than 0. When we look at x equals 2, we have 2 plus 4 times 2 minus 1 is less than 0. And now we have 2 plus 4 is 6 times 2 minus 1 is 1 is less than 0. And is a positive 6 less than 0? No. So right away, this way we could reject this case too. But also, if we just reason it, we can look at, well, x equals 2. We have that x is less than negative 4. And we have x is greater than 1. Now, this end statement means they both need to be true. So when we look at x equals 2, it says 2 is less than negative 4. And 2 is greater than 1. Well, 2 is definitely greater than 1, but 2 is not less than negative 4. So this is how we could rule out case 2. Altogether, we could just cross this off. So now this tells us that our final solution is going to be the solution set we wrote for case 1. We have all values x such that x is less than, I'm sorry, x is greater than negative 4 and x is less than 1. Remember, this worked out to the compound inequality. Negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 1. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this problem as well as this video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that it was helpful.